Okay, go ahead. Uh, hello, everybody. This is uh, Mr. Carl Miller, uh, a leather worker and craftsman and sole proprietor of Handbuilt Leather in Concord, North Carolina. And we're here meeting with him today for him to teach us about his craft. And first, we'd like to have him tell us a little bit about how he got into the leather craftsmanship that he uh, practices every day. I started uh, doing leather work is, is mostly as a hobby, and then I got family and friends that kind of wanted stuff, so I, we started, I started making stuff like that, different odd ends and ends things, custom stuff, and, and, and so and then I just kind of learned mostly on the job, and then over time I got where I decided to start a, uh, a, uh, a, a store online, it's called Hand Built Leather Goods. And so I just went from there, and that's probably been a, mostly six, seven, eight years since I've been doing this. And uh, so that's pretty much how I got into it. So tell us a little bit about the kinds of leather supplies that you start with when you work on a project. The, the company, you mean? No, the, uh, I'm, I'm referring to the supplies, or the types of leather that okay, you okay. use and purchase and how you work with those. Okay, uh, I said I started out with uh, just uh, got scraps from off of eBay and then as I learned my profession a little bit better and better and I knew what I wanted to do and then I located different companies that sold uh, uh, vegetable tan leather which is this here so and uh, but anyway so and then uh, I used chrome tan it's chromonized with salts it's used chemicals but uh, I don't use too much of it uh, because it does have lots of chemicals in it and it doesn't quite last as long as the vegetable tan. Vegetable tan is the number one leather in the United States. I get a lot of my leather from a company in Pennsylvania, which is the oldest tanning company in the world, or in the United States mm -hmm. mostly. But anyway, so, and I use mostly that as all my leather bags, so because it has. Uh, uh, it's more, it has a leather smell to it more because it's all, no chemicals, it's all used, they use, they use leaves, they use bark, different types of bark makes different uh, uh, temperament on the leather, It'll make it soft, the heart, whatever, stiffer, so, and, uh, but that's pretty much how, I, that's where I get my leather somewhat. So. Good. So, most of your heavier bags are made from the vegetable tan leather. About all of my heavy bags uh, are made from uh, uh, vegetable tan leather. And uh, uh, some of the thinner ones, uh, I use uh, more of the uh, chrome tan. Mm -hmm. Because uh, chrome tan is a little softer and you can get it in different colors. And it's more water repellent. And it uh, doesn't last as long somewhat, but, uh, but over time it gets a patina on it, it which is cool. Actually, the, the vegetable tan has the best, the best patina. Yeah. This is a, a full side, a full side of Wicked and Craig harness russet leather. The color is called russet. This leather here, this, and you notice that uh, this is vegetable tan. The reason, the last reason why you can see it, see all these marks here, the different colors. These are uh, fat marks on the cow. This is, this is, yeah. And now when they, uh, this is, uh, it takes them six, six to eight weeks to make one of this, this one hide. Wow. Yeah, different, it soaks in different vats of different leaves, bark, whatever they use. And uh, to get it, we're, we're chrome, chrome tan, this, this is chrome, chrome tan here. This here is, uh, is, 
and you'll see it's a little more softer. Uh, it has it, this is, it has some pull up too. See? It makes it's a sign of a good leather. It has oils and stuff in it, but they can do this in a day. And uh, ninety percent of people used chrome tan for that reason because it's cheaper because they can make more of it faster and everything. But this is the the, the veg tan is more of a high dollar leather, and then uh, this here is uh, their number one grade leather. And it'll have a few marks, but not too many. See, there's a little spot there. But then you'll have, like, right there, if you can see that. Can you see that from here? <clears throat> that's, a, that's a scratch. Probably from a, a barbed wire fence or something like that. Whatever. That was on the cow. Okay. And, uh, and that's what people really like on their bags. Okay, and now we're gonna. We already have this part here where we're gonna make, we're gonna make that right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna cut it, punch it out. And then I'm gonna route the edges. And that's a beveling tool that you're using. Yep. This is a beveling tool. It's like routing the edge is the same you do with wood. To round the corner so that it's not so sharp. And now we're going to take the, I'm going to burnish the edges. This thing here is a high speed and it, it, it causes friction on the leather and it melts the waxes and stuff, oils from in, and, and uh, it, it'll melt the leather, the fibers on the end so it doesn't unravel. This is called burnishing. So it's rounding off the edge of the leather, making it smoother. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, yeah, it's melting the leather, the, uh, this little tan has a lot of waxes in it, oils and stuff, and when it gets hot with friction, it, gets, it melts it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So then it will melt the, the leather and stuff, see it will melt these right into the fibers and seals it off. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that looks like a well finished edge there now. So tell me how you set up your your press here. Okay, we're going to put this put the logo squared up on the little piece of leather here. And then we're just going to take the press here. How about the steel part? You put that steel plate on it? I don't. This here will mash it. Press it right down into the leather. Nice. Very nice. We're going to lay it on this little this here's just going to it's going to bend over the the metal on the other side to hold the grommet in I got the key ring on now we're going to put a little little hook it's called this a, a fish hook and what they do is I'll put this on here and then uh, 
We'll put this guy on here. Okay, there you go. Now you put your keys on here, and then you can take this little hook, and then you stick it in your belt loop. Hang it there, or you can hang it on your pocket, or you can put it on the bag somewhere and hook it, or whatever. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So Mr. Miller, one of the other things that you make is uh, different kinds of wallets. And you actually have made the templates that you use to cut the leather pieces to make the wallets. Can you tell us about that? Okay. I'm going to show you here a couple of my patterns that, uh, that I've made. I've made all these patterns. And then so I have all the, this is a, a vertical card wallet. Okay. And it has four pockets for business cards or whatever. And then you got two side pockets here, so okay. And this is the template that I used to make it with, right here. Now tell us about the weight of the leather that you used for this card wallet. Okay. All this weight in here is all two three ounce leather. All, all the billfolds I make is two, two three ounce, uh, except for this here, this here little wraparound wallet here is uh, just one piece like that, holes punched in them, and then uh, it, it's made out of three, four, and sometimes five, six ounce. So it's a little heavier, but nice. You know. Then I have a little simple card wallet here. It's used two, three ounce leather. So, and then I have a bifold wallet here. Now this is all, this is two, three ounce leather. So it has pocket for bills or whatever, cards, you know. And, uh, and I have a, a uh, passport journal holder here, it holds uh, your passport, uh, notebook, uh, you put your business cards in here and, and a snap, and a snap front, and then it has a place here for a pen. Always looking for a pen when you got stuff. Well, this one here, you got your pen right there. Okay. Mr. Miller, you, your patterns all have holes around the edges for the yep. sewing. Okay. Tell us how you put those holes in there. All the wallets I have, the, the hole is is three eighths, three eighths to the edge. And then all you do is take this and scroll a mark like that. And then I have a punch here. It depends on the, the, the item that I'm making. So of the size of hose. This has this larger hose, a small hole for like a wallet. So then you just line this guy up like this. You follow the line straight down. Like that. And there you have your line for your stitching. Okay, I used I used all main thread. It's a uh, I have different different weight thicknesses, and it, uh, this here this here is a uh, a forty. I'm not sure what they call it ounces or what. This is a uh, this is a little heavier if I use this for for the bags, the heavy bags, and then I have thinner for the wallets. These are all my stitching needles here. Okay, this is for the heavier, heavier, the thicker thread, heavier, and this is for the thin thread. Okay. Hey, you go thread my needles, or you can tame that for them. You stick it through the eye, pull it through, and then you take the needle and you slide it through the end of the thread like this, 
without sticking your fingers like I do there and that that'll hold it mm -hmm. okay now we're going to do a little, uh, saddle stitch here okay you're going to put one needle through that way okay and you get them like that get it even okay and then you want one through here and then the other one comes through the other side like this and then you pull tight this one through here the other one through here and pull tight this is how I stitch the wallets now on the big bags I use heavier string and, and, the, and the string the thread is doubled so it's like two going through each side but this is the way they make their bags, uh, saddles it, it's called saddle stitch are you there? Okay, I'm going to show you some of the tools that I use the most. This is probably my number one tool, the hammer. I got two different, three different weights. This is the heavy weight for punching big stuff. And then I have these punches, okay? This is a small punch for, for using to make wallets and sort. This is one, that's another smaller punch, a little bigger holes, a little further apart, okay? And then I have, uh, I have all these here. These here punches here are different sizes, all the way up to, to I don't know what, probably quarter inch maybe or whatever, but anyway. And then I have, uh, and see, all this stuff has names, and I, I don't know what they call them, but anyway. I have slot cutters, different sizes. So this is an inch and a half for belts to cut your belt for the for the buckle. Okay, different size buckles. I have different sizes. I have a, a, a large hole punch for uh, used for different things. I have uh, cutters to round the different corners on stuff. You know, and then I have uh, I have. Uh, this in here to cut, make the corner nice and uh, take the square off of it, like, and make it round. So, okay. I have a large punch for larger uh, double cap rivets. Let me get some. These are double cap rivets here, and then you have, you put them together, and then uh, you have a special punch that comes with it, so it, and you punch them down. Okay. Then I have a, uh, a snap setter. You put, let me get the snaps. This is a cap snap, the cap part. It goes in there, and then you put your leather, and then this goes on the other side. And then you take this tool here, and then you smash it down, to smash them together. And this is the, the back side, which goes, sits on there. And then and you put your leather on here. But it had a hole in And this is the the male side of the snap. Okay. And then I have a groover. This here tool here. It 
puts an edge on your like that and then you take your you punch your holes right down the center of that and then when you when you stitch it your thread will be down in the leather instead of sticking up above it okay. that's called the groover okay and then I have uh, different bevel tools. I have a, a, a one, a two, a three, and a four. Um, this is a one. Takes just a small amount off. Very little, see? And this is a two, which takes more off. A little bit. And then I have a three and more. A little heavier, see? And then I have a four, which takes a bunch. Oh, okay. There's them. Let's see if we got anything. Oh, okay. And then I have uh, I have copper rivets. We have copper rivets here. And you have the rivet, then you have it's called the burr. Okay. And you have that on there. And then you put through your leathers. And then this here tool here, it beats it, pounds it down, space them together. Okay. And then you cut it off. You have a tool right here. We cut cut that off. And then we have another tool here that will round this edge off. Okay, and let me get something that I did and I'll show you what it's done. I just want to show you. Then is the finished product of the river. See how it's, it's rounded off. Okay, mm -hmm. that's your copper ribbon. That is probably it holds the most. Okay, yeah, okay. You ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. And so then you just you got it? You still good? Yep, still good. Okay. This is tough stuff. Okay. Wow. Dangerous tool there. So this has got super sharp edges on them. So now we use uh, the beveling tool again. And then you like that. Now on on dog collars and belts and etc. I do I do both sides. See? Otherwise it's so sharp. This is nine ten ounce veg tan, vegetable tan leather, and it's uh, it's pretty stiff tough. And there's your dog collar. Mm -hmm. It's cool leather too. Yeah. That's okay. This here, this leather has a lot of pull up. Pull up is called, it's called uh, when you take a piece of leather and you bend it. You see how light it gets. Mm -hmm. Okay, the oils and stuff from the leather is coming to the top. Okay, that's the sign of the, the high dollar leather. It's some of the best leather you can get when it does that. Okay, and you put it back over time, and it will go back somewhat. But it's a uh, this, look at that. Mm. And it's, so, but not all your leather does that. So, your chrome tan leather doesn't do that as much, you know. 